one of the things that we noticed when we were developing all the performance parts that we have so far for the Tundra is that the intercooler reservoir tank and the radiator reservoir tank actually share a combined wall. So you're effectively preheating your intercooler system than you would otherwise. The Stillen intercooler reservoir system, during our testing, it only took two minutes for that water temperature to get back down with the Stillen intercooler system. The OEM system, it took 13 minutes, more than four times longer the Stillen intercooler system to dissipate that heat and get back down to an operating temperature that we considered acceptable. Hey guys, Kyle Millen here with Stillen, and today we're gonna do a deep dive on the intercooler setup for the 2022 and up 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 Toyota Tundra. If you've landed on this video, then you're probably familiar with the True Power by Stillen cold air intake system that we've been developing for the Toyota Tundra. You probably also know about the True Control piggyback module that we've developed for this truck. You don't know about all the other parts that we have in development we haven't yet released, but basically, we've been really pushing our truck hard. And during the development of those parts and more, we've really found that a weak link on this truck is the intercooler system being directly mounted to the radiator system. And now, the Stillen intercooler system allows the intercooler to have its own dedicated location in the engine bay and not share that radiant heat from the radiator or any of the other hot engine bay components. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about intercooling in a turbocharged application or any forced induction application. What does it do and how does it work? Well, an intercooler system is a device used to cool down the air temperature after it's gone through the turbo system. Turbochargers are gonna be compressing that air, they're gonna be condensing those air molecules, and that process dramatically increases the temperature of the air coming out of that turbo. In order to get the most dense air charge, we need to cool that air, reduce the size of those air molecules, so that way we get the best burn and the most oxygen-rich environment in our combustion chamber. Intercooler systems have been around for decades. You have really two different kinds of intercoolers. You have air to water or an air to air. An air-to-air -air intercooler system basically pumps the compressed air through an intercooler core, relying on the airflow from the outside of the vehicle, driving along, cooling down that air charge, and then that reduces the temperature before it goes into the motor. For an air-to-water intercooler system, the air is being compressed and heated up by that turbo system. It's blown through your charge pipes across the face of your intercooler. Your intercooler has water circulating through it in order to reduce that temperature of the air as it crosses the face of the intercooler. That water then circulates back out to a heat exchanger and a pump and a reservoir system and before it works its way back in through the intercooler. The job of the heat exchanger is to dissipate that heat, bring in the fresh air from outside, reduce that water temperature, and then send it back up to the intercooler. Air to air, as I mentioned, has been around for a very long time. We're familiar with it from the 300ZXs, the GTRs, and a wide range of other vehicles. However, air to water intercoolers are actually our preferred method of intercooling a vehicle. They're a little bit more expensive because you have more components. You don't just have an intercooler core and some piping. You have the intercooler, the heat exchanger, a water pump, additional hoses, an additional water reservoir. So they are a little bit more expensive of a route to go, but the reason why we like it is they're far more consistent. It's a system that we've been using since the late 90s in our supercharger kits. Additionally, what we really like about that consistency is also the stability of water. Water takes four times the amount of energy to heat than air. So you have to pump in four times the amount of heat in, into a water source than you do an air source in order to achieve that same temperature. So what that means is, is you can get that intake air temperature much more consistent, much more stable, and a slower increase in temperature. As you put that load through the vehicle, it's gonna take longer for that water to increase in temperature. Now, here's the downside of an air to water intercooler system and why we don't love the way Toyota did it on the Toyota Tundra. Just like it takes four times the amount of energy to increase the temperature of water, it also takes a tremendous amount of time for water to dissipate that heat. One of the things that we noticed when we were developing all the performance parts that we have so far for the Tundra is that the intercooler reservoir tank and the radiator reservoir tank actually share a combined wall. That's not a good thing. What that means is that as you're driving down the freeway or you're towing a vehicle behind you on a trailer, whatever it may be, all that load, all that heat 
that's going through your radiator system is then radiating into the intercooler system. So you're effectively preheating your intercooler system or maintaining a higher temperature in your intercooler system than you would otherwise. So that led us to an idea of divorcing those systems. We wanted to see what happened when we got the intercooler system its own cooling path, we got it its own reservoir bottle, and we left the radiator system to handle its own heat management on its own. So we immediately went to work on developing a test cycle. How are we gonna test this theory? We knew it was a good concept, but we wanted to see how we were actually gonna implement that. So we hooked up an AEM, AQ1 data logger, with this data logger, we're able to read onboard diagnostic systems so we can see vehicle speed, ambient air temperature, intake air temperature. Additionally, with the AEM data logger, we can actually connect in our own sensors and look at different channels that the system allows us to view. So we went ahead and we set up a couple of water temperature sensors so we could actually see the in-stream water temperature and what happened on a wide open throttle pole, steady state cruising down the freeway, sitting at a stoplight for a certain period of time, or sitting in a parking lot as well. As I say, the testing was pretty straightforward. We let the truck idle in our own parking lot here until we reached a uh, consistent operating temperature for both the intercooler water temperature, the engine water temperature, made sure that everything was the same between both tests. We didn't wanna start one with a cold test, one with a hot test or anything like that. So we did these tests on two different days, but our startup procedures were replicated the same in both conditions. Then we drove to the local freeway, got on the freeway, normal acceleration. We didn't do any wide open throttle pulls or anything of that nature. After about five miles, we did a wide open throttle pull. We're not gonna get into the details of how fast we went, but I can tell you it was the same on both tests. After the wide open throttle pull, we drove for about another 10 miles or so, pulled off the freeway into a parking lot that's about 100 yards off the freeway. And the results truly spoke for themselves. Immediately we saw that the Stillen intercooler system was running a few degrees lower than the OEM intercooler system. Now that's not a big difference, right? We're only talking about three degrees or thereabouts. When we did the wide open throttle pull is really when we saw the biggest gains. So they actually saw a similar increase in temperature in both configurations. The Stillen intercooler reservoir system went from an operating temperature of 92 degrees to 102 degrees after a wide open throttle pull, a 10 degree temperature increase. The OEM system went from 94 degrees to 104 degrees, again, a 10 degree temperature increase. But the biggest difference is how long it took for that temperature to dissipate. During our testing, it only took two minutes for that water temperature to get back down to that 92 degree range with the still and intercooler system. With the OEM system, as you can see in the graph here, it never actually achieved that. We recorded for another eight minutes and it never actually got back down to operating temperature. When we pulled off the freeway with the still and intercooler system, we were at 96.6 degrees. We drove off the freeway, parked the truck, and we went from 92 degrees to 96.6. So it was a 4.6 degree temperature increase, simply driving about 100 yards, pulling through a parking lot and pulling into a spot. A significant increase. During the next 10 minutes, the temperature increased to 122.3 degrees. And again, this is only 10 minutes. That's about how long it takes to get through a normal drive through But the really impressive thing was how long it took to dissipate that heat. So even though it took 10 minutes for us to go from 96.6 to 122.3, it only took three minutes for us to dissipate that heat once we got driving again. On the OEM system, we exited the freeway right around 98 degrees. By the time we got to our parking lot, it was 102.2, and then it continued to increase to 127 degrees. So it was a significant increase in temperature, but even more importantly was the time it took to dissipate that heat. It took 13 minutes, more than four times longer the still an intercooler system to dissipate that heat and get back down to an operating temperature that we considered acceptable. Now this is not going to gain you power. I'm not gonna sit here and say that you're gonna get an X percent increase in horsepower or anything like that. What we talk about when we talk about this system is a gain in consistency. So the, as the ECU starts to see that the intake air temperatures are increasing, it's going to be adjusting timing, it's going to be adding fuel in order to preserve the life of that engine. Well, why bother doing that when you can get all the power 
and maintain the longer service life simply by divorcing these two systems and allowing the intercooler to have its own dedicated cooling system. This is a really simple product to install. It works with both the Stillen intake systems and the OEM intake system. We relocate this bottle next to the passenger side fender well. Uh, it's about a 30 minute, maybe an hour installation. We do recommend running to your local Toyota dealer and picking up a bottle of coolant. And we don't want you to cross that with a different type of a coolant and potentially contaminate your lines. So use the OEM Toyota coolant on this system. I hope that explains how we came up with this still an intercooler reservoir tank. As I say, it's one of those additional parts that we found during the development of all of the performance parts that we've released so far for this truck and a few more that are yet to be released. If you have any other questions about this intercooler reservoir tank or any future products that Stillen may be working on, please feel free to drop a note in the comments section below and we'll do our best to respond. Don't forget though that we're always available by phone or by email. Feel free to reach out and one of our experts will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks so much for watching this video. Have a great day.